a little bit about fuel systems and then let's get rid of one. Actually, we already have, so I'm going to talk this a little bit backwards because I want you to understand what we're in danger of losing here. Um, often you'll hear it described that uh, electric cars are going to be more expensive to build than um, the normal cars. It's never been true. Uh, it's extremely disingenuous of the automobile manufacturers to even talk that way. And here's a pretty good example of why. This is our gas tank from the Mini Cooper. Here is where a hose that goes to the little door on the side where you put gasoline. That's pretty normal. Over on this side, we've got a couple of fittings. One of these uh, goes to a tube that goes to the engine and provides it gasoline. And that's pretty normal. Next to it's another fitting. Here's a fitting. Here's an electrical connection. Here's a fitting. Here's a couple of hose keepers for the manifold of hoses that go over this. Here's another fitting. Here's another fitting. Here's an electrical connection. Here's another fitting. Here's some more keepers. And here's another fitting. I don't know if you counted all those. I'm not going to. But because of various governmental mandates about fumes and exposing gasoline vapors uh, to the world, uh, we wind up with a gas tank that's actually a remarkable piece of technology and a very complicated device and it's going to be quite a little issue for you to disconnect. It's not as easy as dropping the old tank like it was in the old days. This sits um, underneath the back seats and in fact has a little curvature to accommodate them. Uh, underneath the back seats we'll show you in a little bit of some access panels to get to this and to this from on top and then the tank uh, saddle system is held in place with uh, a clamp here and here on the car and we'll show you how to drop that. We're kind of filming this in reverse. It took a little bit to figure out how to get the tanks out and it's changed a little bit of our thinking on the uh, uh, battery layout. But I did want you, to want, to see, want you to see what a mess these gasoline tanks have become with uh, all the various engineering to prevent the simple escape of gasoline vapors. Um, and that's uh, um, maybe necessary to keep the air clean. It may be a problem, may not, I'm, I couldn't tell you. But I can tell you that something like this is expensive to develop, it's expensive to manufacture, and it's expensive to install. And uh, we're not gonna need one of these at all. So that's the, uh, the fuel tank. Let's go take a look under the car and see where it came from. All right, we're underneath the car talking a little bit more about the uh, gas tank removal. We're not really going to show you us lowering the gas tank. It was too comical for normal video at home viewing. Um, the biggest thing is you have to drain the tank. Um, I would recommend you just drill two holes. It's a saddle tank that goes, uh, um, it's high in the middle, and there's two tanks, um, on one on each side held up by these two brackets. We removed the brackets, of course, to lower the tank. Um, there are a number of connections you have to make through some access panels up under the back seats. We've got two holes here, I'm sticking my hand through right now, they're removed. You do have to pull out the back seats, the removal's fairly obvious. Uh, some screws holding two circular panels on. And then enough connections to the tank to wire up Buffalo, New York. Um, but we did get them all disconnected and basically a plastic gas tank is held into place by these two straps. Uh, one of the reasons I wanted to show you under here is here are two emergency brake cables that come from in our compartment and go back to the rear disc brakes. These are really high quality cables and they're kind of um, integrated into a system I don't really want to try to duplicate. Uh, some of these little things in a car conversion can actually drive you crazy. Um, 
we spent um, a week and a half on the Speedster, not on converting it to electric, but on putting on rear disc brakes and getting the um, uh, um, stopping brake, the emergency brake, to work. As we've noted in the past, you, you do have to have an emergency brake because you have no compression from the engine or transmission to hold the car in place. These are such beautiful cables and so well integrated into the car and it has an excellent emergency brake on the car that I don't really want to fool with it. So we pulled out the tank. I've put the straps back in place because what we're going to do is cut two uh, holes in the bottom of the rear seats and make two battery boxes. Um, we're not going to make them quite as big as we could. We're, we're going to basically size them to fit on these uh, brackets and do three batteries in each box. Um, they'll be about 18 inches across this way and about 13 inches deep this way. And then they'll sit on these uh, brackets and lip over part of the metal on our uh, um, rear seat and and the uh, the front cross brace member here. Uh, this side will be a little bit lower. We'll make them about 13, 12, 13 inches deep and that should, our, our batteries themselves that we're using the Blue Skies, each battery will be about 12 and a quarter inches long, about five and a half to five and three quarters inches wide, and about nine inches tall but we're gonna want some headspace above those batteries to make connections uh, account for airflow and ventilation before we put a second layer of batteries uh, upstairs on the, where the back seats are. So we're gonna do two boxes down below here where the tanks were that'll hold three uh, four cell batteries each and then uh, we'll make a tray for uh, actually 12 batteries of four cells each up above, but we want it deep enough to accommodate our electrical connections, some ventilation, and so forth. But we're gonna spot these where the tank was. Um, there is one um, item of interest you might wanna look at. This uh, connected to the sending unit on the tank. We're gonna try to uh, interface that with our eVision uh, instrumentation system um, to run the existing gas gauge in the car um, out of this uh, sending unit. We've got another connector here that hooked up to a fuel pump and I'm not sure which one actually measured the fuel flow but the computer in the car can actually do that. We may at some point, probably when the car is finished, um, try to devise a system to activate that on our amperage flow um, to, to simulate that. Um, but in any event, this is where the gas tank was. All it held it in place mechanically with these two braces. Uh, there was a hose that went up here uh, to the filler cap. And we're going to show you a little bit about the filler cap and what we have planned for there uh, here in a minute. But this is... Uh, where the gas tank was, because of these cables and kind of a narrowing at the back, wider at the front, we're going to break this into two boxes, three batteries each, 18 by 13 inches and about 12 inches deep, and use the existing structure um, for holding up the gas tank to hold those two uh, uh, boxes in, in position.